This is exactly right. Hey, you guys, at the end of the show, we've got an exciting announcement to tell you about. So please stay tuned and listen to it. It's for you. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Welcome. And welcome to My Favorite Murder. The Minnesota. Where we tell you stuff that you are telling us first. It's a retelling of your telling. <laughs> uh, a gritty reboot. Mm, like a your, reenactment. Yeah, but verbal. Mm-hmm. Not audio. Not I've been watching so much Shit's Creek. Oh, I started it. and Oh, you did? Yeah, we started it finally because we didn't want to let you down. Thank you. <laughs> because I won't stop talking about it. Now I've started talking like Moira, like by myself to the dogs, where I'm like, Alexis, get out of the kitchen. I can't stop it. <clears throat> um, anyway, that's not this show. We're a different show. This isn't Shit's Creek. No, it's not, but oh, imagine if it were. <laughs> David. Okay, do you want me to go first since I always do? Do it. Um, the first... Uh, email I have here. The subject line is, my dad is a cult lawyer. Oh, huh? fun. Okay. Hi, Georgia, Karen, Stephen, and pets. So the other night I was listening to a podcast called Cults to fall asleep, and I listened to an old one about the 12 tribes cult mm. started by Elbert Spriggs. Have you listened to cults? No. I'm, I'm going to now. Straight up listening to cults now uh, for my Thanksgiving. Thanks drive. for the recommendation. Thanks so much, David. <laughs> I'll give you a little background because it's relevant. Okay. I was scared that when I first read this that um, we had done the 12 Tribes cult and I was like, shit, don't, I have no memory of nope, this whatsoever. Don't remember that. Okay, I felt good. real scared and sad <laughs> and lonely. As Briggs started the cult in the late 1960s, he taught his followers that all other religions are satanic. I'm, I'm into that. Kind of true. And that Satan must be beaten out of children oh. before they turn four. I'm off. I'm adult members. I'm not on board anymore. I. That's sickening. Mm -hmm. uh, the community refuses all medical help. So some children have died from the beating. Jesus. To make money, Spriggs opened up food stores called the Yellow Deli all over the country, <gasps> which sounds oddly familiar. Mm. Um, I'm thinking of the Hello Deli from David Letterman's show. Forget it. <laughs> It's just a rhyme. It's not the same thing. <laughs> uh, can you tell I'm wearing my pajamas right now? It's because tired. I'm wearing my pajamas at George's house it's right now. It's tired today. It's tired outside it today. It feels tired yeah. today. So, excuse us. Excuse me while I kiss this guy. <laughs> um, okay. Members of the cult, including children, worked for free there at the Yellow Deli for up to 12 hours a day. Ugh. Spriggs purchased single-family homes and would house up to 40 members in one home. No. The cult had so many allegations of child trafficking. Over time, the cult changed the names of its delis to shake the tail of the people who were catching on. Mm. All of this sounded oddly familiar to me. We have a bakery in the town where my dad's law firm is called the Blue Blinds Bakery. The people there are odd but friendly, and they dress really old-fashioned. I just thought the children that worked quietly in the back were their children. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because it's a, quote, family-run business, oh, end no. quote. Yikes. I had been going to this bakery with my dad since I was an infant, so I texted him about it. Turns out, not only does my dad know that the Blue Blinds Bakery is part of the 12 Tribes cult, but it gets worse. He's their commercial real estate lawyer. What? <laughs> and there's um, five full exclamation points after that. Uh, I agree with those. <laughs> he helps them buy and sell houses and bakeries to this day. No. He told me that three years ago they invited him to Thanksgiving. <gasps> And asked him if he had any young children. No. So much for you're in a cult. Call your dad. Yeah. <laughs> SSDGM Hannah. Holy shit. <laughs> That's the best. Fuck. Very fuck. That's. <laughs> <laughs> That's like, you know. What do you do then? What do you do? What do you do? That's your dad, dad, fucking shit up for people. Don't do that, dad. But you know, all cults have to have. They have to have commercial real estate lawyers. <laughs> they have to have arms dealers. You know, 
Cults, yeah. this is the business cults do. This guy's trying to make a living. As my dad always says, there's no shame in a paycheck <laughs> unless you're helping a sadistic fucking cult. A child beating, a cult yeah. that's based on child beating. Yes. You might want to look and do you might, pulling your, yeah. your interests out of that. You might have some shame in that paycheck. There might be some shame and there also might be uh, repercussions later. It, uh, yes. From the business. You're, but, yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. Ah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Uh, hi, Karen and Georgia and Steven and pet crew. Uh, I came to the meet and greet in Austin, but got so nervous. I wasn't able to tell you my, uh, our, tell you our murder meat cute. Oh, what's, what's that? A meat cute's that thing that they do in a movie where it's the way they figure out how to bring the guy and the girl or oh. whoever together. So it's like he's roller skating and then he roller skates by and falls down. And that's how those two guys I, meet in that movie. That's or the meat cute. Meat cute. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, exactly. this is called murder meat cute. Okay. Thank you for an incredible show and all you do. My husband and I used to live in LA. Soon after we started dating, he was about to go on tour with his band and we were going to hang out one last time before he left. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. <laughs> Has to know. <laughs> uh, I was watching a show at the Echoplex. Oh, we know I've that. Been there. And plan on meeting my future husband after the show. As I was enjoying Beach House. Do you know them? Yeah. They're good. Yeah. I received a text that said, don't come over. There was just a murder. What? I thought to myself, yeah, right. If he didn't want to hang out, he could have just said so. <laughs> he lived off. I also take murder personally <laughs> and figure out a way to make it seem like I'm unattractive because people get murdered in other parts of the city. He lived off Melrose in the area close to Koreatown. It turned out he wasn't just trying to make an excuse. He was the only witness to a murder outside his apartment while smoking a cigarette. Fuck. You gotta quit mur- smoking kills. You gotta That's quit smoking. In so many ways. Uh, not knowing it was gang violence and to not get involved, he gladly jumped in a police car and drove around. <laughs> Around trying to help the police identify the killer. Oh, no. After he returned from his small tour, he notified he noticed a gold car that would drive slowly by the apartment daily and soon decided it was better to stay with a friend. You can imagine his stay on a friend's couch wasn't great for our impending relationship, but he texted me soon after Thanksgiving that year, and it turned out the murder was not just an excuse, it really happened. Obviously I wanted to know everything and ended up marrying him. <laughs> <laughs> because it would take so long to tell the story. Uh, let's just get married. Y- yeah. Seriously, thank you for all you do. I'm a therapist who works with a lot of trauma, and so I can't tell you how many of the folks I see are murderinos. Somehow, for those of us who experience traumatic events, it's helpful to go over these horrific crimes to calm our own anxiety. Of course. To do it with humor is that much better. SSDGM Elise. Nice. nice. Meet cute. Murder. A meet cute. Uh, also, one that's right here. We could pi- we could picture it happening in our to them own backyard. Finally, something we can be interested in <laughs> that happens at the Echo Plex. Uh, uh, we, my our friend, my friend April Richardson, made me go to a Smiths night at the Echo Plex one night, hey. and I was like, "This is great, sure, that'll be really fun." Mm-hmm. I sat against the wall the entire night. She's like, "What are you doing? Let's party!" And I was just like, "I." I can't. What am I doing? <laughs> I don't want to dance at a club. I'm almost 65. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you go to get a discount to get in. Don't they have a senior discount? Why didn't they drop my meals on wheels off to yeah. me at the club while I was there? This is, uh, I won't read you the subject line. Okay. It's a giveaway. Hi. So about a month ago, I got my mom drunk on a bottle of wine. <laughs> and since that's the only way we can bond as adults... <laughs> I got her to tell me a lot of family gossip. Oh, that just hit me real hard. <laughs> in the I get it department. Yep. I can relate. My dad's family is super Irish, super Catholic. So, of course, every, everyone has some shit that they just push deep down, which Ooh. is why I never heard this story before. Uh, growing up, I had an aunt, let's call her Emily, who was married to my uncle, let's call him Josh, for most of my childhood. Then one year, my Aunt Emily didn't show up at Thanksgiving, and I never saw her or heard anything about her ever again. Um, <laughs> Very Catholic. Mm. Apparently, a few years after they adopted the kids, the FBI showed up at my uncle's office. They told him that he couldn't go home and that the officers were at his house picking up the kids as they spoke. When he asked what was going on, they told him that he couldn't go home because, and this is in all caps, oh my, God. my aunt hired a hitman <gasps> to kill him. What? Turns out Aunt Emily had met some guy from Egypt on Facebook and they fell in love. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> it's like, why can't that ever happen to me? 
Um, he said he wanted to move to the U.S. to be with her, but they had to get rid of Uncle Josh first. So as one does, they decided to kill him instead of getting a divorce like a normal normal person. Oh, my God. Four question marks. This guy promised to help hire someone to take care of it. And the only reason anyone found out was because my Aunt Emily told a friend of hers that this was going down. Jesus. Side note. Why are there so many loose-lipped murderers around? <laughs> Do they think everyone else is on board? <laughs> uh, the friend went right to the cops who promptly arrested her. My uncle and the two kids show up around the holidays every year, but now I know why Aunt Emily disappeared. <laughs> anyway, can't wait to see you guys in Denver this spring. Kristen. Did she go to prison forever? Or did Seems she move like to it. Egypt and marry her lover? And, and that love was meant to be. Oh, that was the one that was meant to be. Not they, the other one. They moved. Yeah, exactly. That's how she went out. They live <sighs> in an apartment <sighs> inside the Sphinx. <laughs> You know those beautiful apartments they um, built. They have these loft spaces in the Sphinx <laughs> that the view is amazing. Ce- high ceilings. Super high ceilings. It's really cold and damp. Haunted as fuck. Uh, yeah. With a fucking Egyptian cat. Cat ghosts. Okay. Thanksgiving in jail with Cinnamon Brown. Oh, yes. That's right. Hi, guys. <laughs> and uh, let's, so Cinnamon Brown is the, the murderer that I did a couple of weeks back where she killed her stepmom and then hit hit in the um what's it called doghouse right oh i'm so sorry i thought you meant the sex worker who got hugh grant got caught with in the uh, early 90s (laughs) is that her name (laughs) nope (laughs) (laughs) well now i don't want to read this it's gonna be so disappointing no 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 no. i'm so sorry i Uh, really don't want to disappoint you i just really love hugh grant i thought you just liked that story a lot i was like oh karen's really no no that was a tragic story because it was the little girl whose father Tried like to kill tricked her, her and, into yeah. do, into killing her step her stepmother. Yeah, oh, no, it's so super fucked up. It, so okay, here we go. Okay, <laughs> when I was a teenager, and then it says I'm the exact same age as Karen with an older sister and lived in Santa Rosa, California. We were basically twins. I am an ER nurse instead of a comedian, though. But I have lots of funny, gross, and terrible stories too. Amazing. That was her side note. Just total parallel lives. Parallel. Anyway, my mom and stepdad worked at the California Youth Authority, the juvie from the Cinnamon Brown story. Mm. Many times my sister and I would go to super weird work functions that involved the inmates, <laughs> like holiday potlucks in the yard. Over the years, my stepdad became really close with Cinnamon, and one Thanksgiving, he insisted that we eat dinner at the CYA and specifically with Cinnamon. Since she and I were basically the same age, they made us sit next to each other as if we had a lot of stuff in common. <laughs> but she asked me a bunch of questions about high school and stuff, and it wasn't too bad but the at the end she told me to wait and she and she got uh, somehow got a bag of her belongings that were stored at the cya and proceeded to give me some clothes it was really weird but there was no way i could say no because i knew she still had years to go in jail not long after that i moved to san diego to go to college and it turns out a pair of jeans she gave me fit really well and i wore them for years and actually cut them into shorts a few years later it was the (laughs) early 90s And a pair of boots uh, from her turned into a pair of go-to shoes for me for years. So there I was walking around San Diego and this young convicted killer's hand-me-down jeans and boots with my big hair and 70s crop tops getting an education. Definitely the beginnings of a murderino. Love to you all, Becky B. That's so fucking sad. I know. It's like she's not going to get out of jail. So it's like, t- please Here, take these clothes a teenager, and live a life. Right. I went into jail as a teenager and these were the clothes that came with me because I was a teenager and I'm going to be here forever. So you should take them and wear them now. And, and go, be a, go be a teenager in my boots yeah, and shorts uh, and jeans. I know. Uh, and she did it. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, what are you going to do? God, that's it doesn't seem fair. Mm-mm. But she got out and she's got like a family now and stuff. Oh, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I forgot she's, about that part. She probably wants her boots back. <laughs> she should show up at that girl's door and be like, why the fuck you cut up those jeans? That yeah. was not part of the agreement. I said you could borrow them. You don't cut jeans up. <laughs> it's not the 90s. What do you doing? <laughs> God, we used to wear jean shorts with black tights and boots. Oh, yeah. Like, constantly. That was the first thing I wore to high school, my first day of high school with a Jane's Addiction shirt. Yeah. And a collar. Yeah. Like a dog collar. Yeah. I was a dick. You really, you must have really like kicked the door open that day Just with my purple docks. High school, high school, and I ditched like to go smoke cigarettes because <laughs> I needed a cigarette so bad at fourteen. <laughs> I got to go get a smoke. Oh, girls, I'm jonesing for nicotine. One of your husband's 
best tweet, my favorite tweets of Vince's mm-hmm. is at every high school there was a smoking tree. <laughs> <laughs> there was there was that's he, it's the truth uh, he's funny he's a funny man with America's number one meal kit hello fresh you'll get easy seasonal recipes and pre-measured ingredients delivered right to your door all you have to do is cook and enjoy hello fresh makes cooking delicious meals at home a reality from step-by-step recipes to pre-measured ingredients, you'll have everything you need to get a wow-worthy dinner on the table in about 30 minutes. Say goodbye to endless grocery store trips and takeout. HelloFresh has you covered. There's something for everyone, from family recipes to calorie smart and vegetarian, and fun menu series like Hall of Fame and, and Kraft Burgers. HelloFresh has more five-star recipes than any other meal kit, so you'll know you're getting something incredible. HelloFresh is flexible, and it fits your lifestyle, easily change your delivery days, food preferences and skip a week whenever you need break out of your dinnerette and make deliciousness part of every week with hello fresh i love that even though hello fresh is super easy and they make it really basic and like straightforward you still feel like you're cooking this like incredible home cooked dinner and that makes me feel good about myself and that instead of just ordering takeout i'm actually making something and preparing something at home and that just it feels good so for 80 dollars off your first month of hello fresh go to hellofresh.com slash murder 80 and enter murder 80 it's like receiving eight meals for free only at hellofresh.com slash murder 80 promo code murder 80 Go by. Hey to my lovely MFM ladies, Stephen and Animals. Mm. The, uh, the night before Thanksgiving is a huge party night in mm. our town. Yeah, same in my town. Mm-hmm. As the college kids come home and everybody meets up at the bars. Mm-hmm. We had gone out with friends. She is married to a cop. Okay. So, yeah. she, so she's privy to a lot of information. She's privy to information and hear stories and stuff. So she goes out with friends and then he, and it says in parentheses, he was off duty, don't worry. Mm-hmm. And when the bars closed, we decided to go to an after party at a friend house before going there we stopped at a gas station because you know beer and cigs and i ran inside to get our goods Mm -hmm. he got out of the car to talk and when i came back i noticed my purse was gone he said he saw a girl lean down next to our car but thought that she just dropped something as it so happened the car she was in was pulling out of the parking Mm -hmm. lot and he told me to follow them uh, so here I am, a little 23-year-old girl chasing some car down a residential street in a Pontiac Grand Am, yes. trying to get my purse back at two in the morning. The road came to a fork and I went left and thought I lost them. He told me to turn around. And when I did, lo and behold, here they come around the corner from the right side of the fork. My husband then took the steering wheel and jerked the car mm. in front of theirs and jumped out. The girl was in the passenger seat and she got out with my purse and said she took it and was sorry. At the time, the driver took off at that time the driver took off uh, with her door still open (gasps) and drove around her in the yard of a house and left her there yes he fucking left her there my husband identified himself asked her what her name was handed me my purse and told me to call the police when I reached in to get my cell phone she snatched my hand and (gasps) told me no um, he then took her by the arm. She elbowed him in the face what? and took off running. So, of course, he ran after yep. her. He tackled her in the front yard of another home while I was frantically calling the cops. Um, and then she then, out of nowhere, pulls a fucking shampoo bottle out of her coat what? and starts hitting him on the head. With it. <laughs> Where the fuck did that come from? A few minutes later, the driver comes back down the street because apparently he can't leave it alone. And my husband recognizes him from prior arrests. No. He tells him to stay in the car and the guy knew who he was and that he was a cop. So the cops finally show up and take her to jail, search the car and check to see if, she, if the driver has warrants. Um, they just so happened to find a gun in the car <gasps> and he also went to jail. We totally stayed sexy and didn't get murdered. Um, SSDGM. Also, never trust a bitch that hits you with a shampoo <laughs> bottle. Missy. That's the craziest story I've ever heard. It's so crazy. Should I do one more? Yes. Quick one? Yes. Okay. I'm not going to tell you the name of it. Hi. I meant to send y'all this story back in November, but forgot until this week's mini For some reason, the, sto- or the story of the dude laying down in the movie theater reminded me of this story. Mm-hmm. Remember that one? Mm-hmm. Jesus. On Thanksgiving, my cousin told me uh, this story while we were sitting on the couch waiting for dinner. She was pretty cavalier about the whole thing and promptly gathered, and I promptly gathered the entire family and made her repeat the story to the larger group. <laughs> the story is as follows. When my cousin was in college, she volunteered at a university health center on weekend nights. 
essentially she and a couple other students would sit there with drunk kids and make sure they didn't choke on their own vomit or die or whatever. Nice. A job that in 2018 seems like it would go against many social health regulations. <laughs> uh, one night, a male coworker at the health center offered them apple juice and a snack and the girls accepted. A half hour later or so, my cousin and her fellow, fellow volunteers found themselves projectile vomiting in the bathroom. Uh oh. Not thinking much of it, the girls chalked it up to rotten apple juice. I don't think that's the thing. I don't either. <laughs> rotten apple juice. You know. It's dark brown apple juice. Yeah. It's green. Worms. F- foam on top. <laughs> Until it's at pre puked. <laughs> Until at one of the volunteers' meetings, they realized that a ton of the girls had gotten sick while working there on multiple occasions. It turns out that the worker who gave them the juice, <gasps> ready for this in all caps? Yes. Had a vomiting fetish and had been spiking the apple juice with Ipecac. <gasps> What? Uh huh. The f- what uh-huh. a terrible fetish to uh-huh. be burdened with in your life. Mm. How fucking gross is that? Mm-hmm. All of it. Uh- yes. <laughs> Wait, let me go on. <laughs> and would then presumably yeah. stand outside of the bathroom and listen to the girls yak. <laughs> the guy was fired, and my cousin said that he that she was supposed to testify against him in court, but that she ended up being too lazy and never went. She also mentioned that she told my aunt and uncle at the time, who were um, concerningly casual about the incident. However, it seemed too bizarre of a story not to submit to you guys. Yes, SSDGM Sophia. How fucking bananas! The- so something happened early on, oh. perhaps, that made him get a boner when he heard people puke. Well, so I knew a girl who had a ton of little younger siblings, a woman who had a ton of younger siblings, and she remembered every single time her mom was pregnant would have violent uh morning sickness. Yeah. And so she had a real big phobia of vomiting. Like, you couldn't, she had to, like, leave if you even mentioned it. Yeah. So I wonder <laughs> if he had the opposite, where he got a boner every time his mom was pregnant. Yeah. Or maybe one million other other things that are awful. Because let's think of all of them. Well, but here's the thing: like when you know, um, in like a terrible movie or TV show, when they have someone vomit and then they feel the need to actually show some poor like prop guy has to throw a cup of beef stew into a toilet because they need to for some reason make it real. Yeah, or like you have to like they have to wipe their face because there's something on it. It's so gross to me and makes me want to puke immediately yeah. that I don't have to leave like your friend yeah. but it, it I, it's like I'll mute it if I can get to really the mute really quick yeah because it's just like it makes me think I'm feel like I'm gonna throw yeah. up and think it it's disgusting the idea it's such a strange like human re- reflex that's yeah. so gross yeah that the fact that all of that is being sent in a different direction to <gasps> being aroused by yeah. it is very difficult to understand. Very. And the smell. And the smell. And the and the projectileness of it all. And the Ipecac- noises. <laughs> <laughs> and Ipecac, it does it till your stomach is just empty. Oh, no. Yeah. It's for kids who ate poison. Oh, yeah, yeah. So send us your fucked up stories. <laughs> no, we're never talking about puking no. again. <laughs> uh, is that it? Oh, I think it is. Okay. <laughs> Let's end on vomiting. Let's please. Always. Uh, send her your stories that aren't about puking to my favorite murder at Gmail. And uh, thank you for sharing thank with you. us. Especially Thanks. you, Missy. You really nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> Stay sexy. And don't get murdered. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, I'm sorry. How was you want cookie? Ah. Oh. Wow. He did it for you. <laughs> that was exciting. Yeah. Hi. Hello. It's Georgia and Karen, and we are excited to tell you that we are launching our new podcast network, Exactly Right. Yes, we're very excited to tell you guys about it. We've chosen a bunch of shows with specifically with murderinos in mind, and we can't wait for you guys to hear them. There's going to be more true crime. There's going to be comedy. There's going to be cat stuff and more (laughs) and a lot of very very special hosts very special hosts and and then at the end of this month we are going to announce the details of these the first slate of shows for exactly right yeah so stay tuned for that and in the meantime you can start following exactly right on twitter facebook and instagram and please sign up for the newsletter at exactlyrightmedia.com you guys we're becoming podcasting moguls join us oh my god it's exciting we're so excited Goodbye. Stay sexy. Don't get murdered. Bye. Bye.